Harrison with you, asking you this question. How many Holocaust survivors are there really? How many are still out there that we don't know about? Did you know that we're talking over a hundred thousand people? Straight ahead. I've spent a decade taking a bite out of conspiracy theories, unraveling urban legends, and grappling with worldwide top secret issues. I've even racked up some of their awards, all while ferreting out the bottom line. Uh-oh. On all topics, controversial, bizarre, and taboo. Interviewing movers and shakers, agitators and muckrakers. But that doesn't answer my question. That is all I'm answering. With me, Carrie Harrison, as your guide. I want to introduce to you Zane Busby. Zane, you know as a CNN hero. You know her as a director from who knows how many episodes of The Golden Girls to whatever. She's also an actress, and she's put her heart and soul and her real talents behind finding people who are hidden all over the world, terrified half the time to come out in the open, who are survivors of the Holocaust. Welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. I know that was a very dour introduction. It's I like, well, know. I, how do I get excited now? But this is exciting because you've is. already found over 2,000 people. Right. You know, it's 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 interesting because I'm a comedy person. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a comedy director, and now I have one foot in comedy and one foot in the Holocaust, which is a very strange combination. But well, it, Hogan's it, Heroes would yes, have been exactly. the closest. Yes, <laughs> exactly. But uh, the Survivor Mitzvah Project yeah. is an organization, it's a humanitarian organization that is the only organization in the world bringing these people direct and continuous financial aid. So uh, these people are living in small huts, they need money for food, heat, and medication. These are the people who time forgot. These are the people who are the forgotten heroes of the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. These are the people who are out there. No one is helping them. And they're out there and they're so glad to know that someone remembers. It yeah. changes their life. So we're a life-changing organization, not just for the survivors we help, but for all of the people who donate. Because it, the, when they change a life, you know, just by a donation, they get a great feeling. And it's a great feeling for me, too, that every day I get to change a life for the better. Every day I get to save a life. Every day I get to be you know, the cavalry. I get to be a, a hero for these people, and mm. so does everyone else who donates. And, and that's the thing is, without somebody advocating for you, you're invisible. That's right. And, and you wither and die. And um, I'm just going to give a couple of personal anecdotes here, because uh, I went to a place called Sachsenhausen, which is a camp outside of Berlin. And I got there, and the Wiesenthal Center, the s famous Simon Wiesenthal Center, didn't know where this place was. They knew the name of the town. I drew them a map on a napkin afterwards, and I get to the town, and I ask, where's the camp? I, I don't really know what, how else do you ask? I right. Go, where's the camp? What camp? I said, you know, the big, because it was really the first operating camp. That's it had the Arbeit macht frei, the famous slogan, work will set you free. It had uh, medical facilities. It had ovens, which was taken out because it's in former East Germany, and that's a key thing. The right. Soviet part of Germany, after the wall fell, it became part of regular Germany. But these camps continued until 1989, and they ended up as sort of gulags. They took right. the ovens out, but the commandant's office still had polished teak wood desks. It was still fully functioning. That's right. We don't know about this in history. Right. It's, it's a part of history. I, I never knew. I took a two-week hiatus and thought I was just going to go to Eastern Europe and visit the birthplaces of my grandparents and find them. And when I got across the border into Belarus, it was like going back in time, like yeah. 200 years. Yeah. It looked like a set from Fiddler on the Roof, you know, little wooden houses, no cars, no restaurants, no TV antennas, no electricity. And uh, it was just out in the boondocks. Downtown LA. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I would knock on doors and no one would answer. And, you know, I would go around the back and all these old people were on their hands and knees digging up potatoes because if they didn't get their potatoes out of the ground, it was September, before it froze, they wouldn't have winter food supply. They lived on potatoes, right? And then I would say, uh, you know, hello or shalom aleikum. Someone right. said, say shalom aleikum so they don't think that you're an enemy, you know? Right, right. And I did, and they would just like burst into a big smile and invite us in and we had tea and they would tell their story. And I find that with the survivors that we're helping that are so in need, and I always ask them, what's the most important thing in life? Because some of them are very, very old. Mm. And they, to a person in every language we communicate in, they say, Kindness and compassion are the most important things in life. Kindness towards a stranger and compassion. Because mm -hmm. each one of them was saved by an act of kindness. A piece of bread was thrown. They hid someone for the night. Yes. They, they, you know, they did one 
tiny act that saves someone's life. So they consider that to be the most important thing in life because things mean nothing to them, possessions mean nothing because everything they had, every photograph, every, every musical instrument, yes. anything was burned. So things don't mean anything, but five minutes between two people or a kind word, that means the world to them. That's right. <laughs> I'm just going to jump in for a second because people come and go, and especially on radio, we can't see you, so I'm going to reintroduce you. Harrison with you. This is Go Harrison. You can catch us anytime on Facebook as well, keyword Go Harrison, on Twitter, at Go Harrison, Instagram, <laughs> Go Harrison, the whole soup, cat, and pizzas. We're talking right now to Zane Busby. You know her as a director. If you watch any kind of comedy television, your na her name is going to come up as the director. You've seen her in different films, and one of the nice things about artists who are good artists is they always reflect what's going on in real life and at some point they decide uh, to put them their own sort of comfort uh, in peril to do the right thing out there on behalf of other people and she is responsible for the success the great success of the mitzvah project and they're out there finding the last survivors of the Holocaust of which there may be over a hundred thousand still out there who desperately need help and one of the things Zane has done already found two thousand providing food water shelter the things that you and I want many of us are underemployed these days where food water shelter like oh I get it I get it but we have a way at least to find some of that food, water, shelter. Other people have nothing, and they're starving to death, and they've already been through the most horrific part of the world. And Hogan's Heroes, which if you're super young, you may have seen it on TV Land or Nick at Night. It was a comedy World War II. I mean, imagine a concentration camp comedy with comical Nazis. You'd never be able to get that green lip today, <laughs> would you? Yeah, let me, okay, so we got the Burkhalter. Uh, no, it's not gonna happen. It wasn't uh, Jewish, gay, trade unionists, gypsies, zero percent. So they were able to get away with it. Let's take a look. This breaks down the entire Survivor Mitzvah project in such a beautiful nutshell. As a child, I ran from the killing squads three times. Even now, I still dream that I am running. Our entire little town was burned to nothing. My mother and father were killed in the mass graves. I sometimes think it would have been better if I had died with them. I cry at night. Your letters are for me like medicine. These are the last survivors of the Holocaust in Eastern Europe. And they are out there today, elderly, alone, suffering. They don't have extended family. Life is so hard in these places. They don't have anything. And we let them know they've not been forgotten. This person I'm very worried about. His wife is paralyzed. He himself is so not well. We get stacks and stacks of letters every week, mostly in Russian. They're sent out to translators, and then we start answering them immediately and sending money. We're now helping 2,000 people in eight countries. <laughs> the money is life-saving, but the connection, the letters, the communication, equally life-saving. I'm gonna come back and see you. We can really write a more hopeful final chapter to the Holocaust this time one of kindness and compassion and what they finally deserve at the end of their lives. CNN hero Zane Busby there in that clip. Zane is with us today here on Go Harris and the Survivor Mitzvah project is what she's doing, helping locate the last remaining probably 100,000 survivors of the Holocaust, many of whom are hidden away. They do not have services, and the plot of the play here, as you saw and as you heard there in that clip, is to raise money and provide help. I was in Dachau, famous uh, outside of Munich, about 30 minutes out, Munich where BMW is made, and Audi, the very, very rich part of Germany. And I met for about an hour with the senior archivist of Dachau, who Oof. happens to be a gay guy, one of my people. And he said he has a roster of 800 people that went through Dachau that the German government officially says were not there. Right. They don't exist. This is all fabricated. They refuse officially, institutionally, as a government to deny there was any such thing. And this is still going on. So he has an independent mission outside of being an employee of Dachau. Then he has a human being to get the truth out. Right, which so, is so important. Right, it's just hidden. Well, look at the world we're living in. We're living in a world where people are being beheaded, where people are being set on fire in a, into a cage, where there's no tolerance for anybody who's a different color, uh, has a different sexual orientation. There's just no tolerance anymore. Yeah. It's, it's gone away. We had yeah. some tolerance and then it, then it vanished. So we're living in a, in a very scary time right now. And what we have to do 
if we want to keep ourselves human beings is to reach out to other people and celebrate the differences and stop trying to separate people. And by doing that, you're really being inclusive and you're really being on the side of good, really. There's, you know, there's evil in this world, there's good in this world, and that's being on the side of good and it feels great. One human family. In fact, this is Hotel Earth and everyone gets a room. <laughs> Harrison with you. This has been Go Harrison. We've been talking to Zane Busby, B-U-Z-B-Y, if you're listening on radio. Uh, you can catch a podcast of this and everything else at kpfk.net, also on WCOBM. I want to thank you so much. What's thank the you. quick go-to to follow you on the... Survivor Mitzvah, and Mitzvah is M-I-T-Z-V-A-H, so SurvivorMitzvah.org, and you can donate with one click, or you can text to donate by just texting the word GIVING to 41444. There it is.